Hello everyone, I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. I am the author of Running, Maximize Performance and Minimize Injuries. Thank you for viewing today's episode of Dr. Ozello Sports Medicine Report. Today I will be covering entrapment of the suprascapular nerve. Entrapment of the suprascapular nerve is a common injury among overhead athletes, especially young throwing athletes and athletes who have suffered an injury to the rotator cuff, especially a rotator cuff tear. Athletes who participate in volleyball, baseball, especially pitchers, basketball players, football players, wrestlers, bodybuilders, and even dancers are prone to entrapment of the suprascapular nerve. The suprascapular nerve arises from the superior trunk of the brachial plexus. The suprascapular nerve supplies motor innervation to the supraspinatus muscle and the infraspinatus muscle. These two muscles are in the rotator cuff. They are located in the posterior aspect of the scapula. The suprascapular nerve also supplies sensory innervation to the acromioclavicular joint, which is nicknamed the AC joint, and the glenohumeral joint. The mechanism of injury of an entrapment of the suprascapular nerve can be a traumatic fashion or it can be a non-traumatic fashion. In a traumatic fashion, usually there is a direct contact or compression in the area where the nerve is located. In a non traumatic onset. The mechanism of injury is just overuse. There is something that the athlete is doing, some type of activity that is causing this entrapment. Just like I mentioned before, overhead athletes can be too much throwing. Volleyball players can be too much practicing of the serve. These motions, when done repetitively, can cause entrapment of the suprascapular nerve. Entrapment of the suprascapular nerve can occur in two very distinct locations. One location is before the nerve innervates the supraspinatus muscle, and one is after the nerve innervates the supraspinatus muscle. The first area is called the suprascapular notch. If there is an entrapment or compression of the nerve at the suprascapular notch, the compression will affect the supraspinatus muscle and the infraspinatus muscle. If the compression is in this area, this injury is much less tolerated. It can cause weakness in the shoulder, especially in a motion called external rotation, which is turning the arm and in abduction. So the supraspinatus muscle becomes weak and the infraspinatus muscle becomes weak and if it's long standing, there can be atrophy if there is compression of the suprascapular nerve at the suprascapular notch. Now, the second area is called the spinal glenoid notch. That is distal to the supraspinatus muscle or distal to where the nerve innervates the supraspinatus muscle. If the compression or entrapment is in this area, this injury is tolerated much better because the weakness or the de innervation is only in the infraspinatus muscle. Now, obviously, it's still a serious injury. It's still a nerve compression, but it is tolerated much better than if, it, if the nerve is entrapped and affecting both the supraspinatus and the infraspinatus muscle. Now is the time for the disclaimer. This video does not take the place of seeing a medical professional. Please understand that. Please do yourself a favor. If you think you have an injury to your shoulder, if you think you have a compression or an entrapment or neuropathy of the suprascapular nerve, please see a medical professional. You can see a doctor of chiropractic, you can see a medical doctor, but please see a medical professional. This will help you to get an evaluation, to get proper testing and get imaging if you need it. That will help you get that proper evaluation, get the proper diagnosis, and send you on the proper path to recovery. The symptoms of an entrapment of the suprascapular nerve are 
Poorly localized pain in the shoulder, can be in the posterior shoulder, can be in the lateral shoulder, can be in the upper back. This pain is usually a deep, dull, achy type of pain. There can also be a sharp shooting shock-like pain, which is common among nerve entrapment. There's also going to be weakness or if it's long-standing atrophy in the supraspinatus muscle and the infraspinatus muscle, there will be an inability or weakness to perform external rotation, and there will be difficulty performing shoulder abduction. Recovery of a nerve injury is usually faster and more complete if the compression is mild and the compression is of a shorter duration. So you want to take action immediately. Also, recovery is usually faster and more complete if you modify or cease doing the activity that is exacerbating this condition. So you want to eliminate the contributing factors. Please see a medical professional if you think that you have this condition. This can be a serious pathology in the short term and in the long term. Anytime there is a nerve entrapment, there can be a long term sequela of symptoms which can bother you for your entire life. So please seek medical care. Please see a doctor of chiropractic. That's what we do. We specialize in nerve entrapment conditions where we help to restore proper nerve flow. We help to restore proper skeletal motion which optimizes nerve system flow. Self-treatment is extremely important in any condition. I like to call it patient education. When I'm treating patients, I teach them as much as I possibly can about what they can do to help themselves. In patient education for the suprascapular nerve entrapment, there's several different things that you can do to help yourself. First of all, you can perform what's called a nerve slide exercise. Nerve slides are non-resistance, non-exertion specific motion exercises that move a nerve along its pathway. You start with the nerve in one position and you end up with the nerve in another position. There is a very specific nerve slide exercise for the suprascapular nerve. I will post that video at the end of this video so you can see me performing that and describing a nerve slide for the suprascapular nerve. Also, you can do strengthening exercises for the scapula retractor muscles. You want to do some self-massage get in there and work those muscles very mildly. You never want to use too much pressure. You want to work very mild. Also, like I said, the strengthening exercises, you can do stretching exercises. Most of the time, people are gonna have tightness in the muscles in the front part of the shoulder, in the chest muscles. You may have tightness in the anterior rib cage, but stretching the entire shoulder will help you a great deal. Also, stretching the neck may help. Anytime you stretch, you want to hold a mild, comfortable stretch. None of these exercises, the nerve slides, the strengthening or the stretching exercises should evoke symptoms or intensify symptoms. If they do, you want to stop that exercise immediately and you want to modify it or you want to find something else that is going to help you to complete your objective. You never want to perform any type of exercise that is going to evoke symptoms or intensify your symptoms. Thank you everyone for viewing today's episode of Dr. Ozello Sports Medicine Report. I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. I am the author of Running, Maximize Performance and Minimize Injuries. Please feel free to visit my website, championshipchiropractic.com, where you can get additional information on the book and you can connect with me on other social media platforms. Thank you for viewing today's episode of Dr. Ozello Sports Medicine Report. Please feel free to like this video. Please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube page, Dr. Donald A. Ozello, DC. Also, if you have feedback, if you have questions, or if you have suggestions, please leave them in the comments section below. Thank you very much for watching today's video. And always, always, always remember, train hard, train smart, utilize nutritional strategies that work for you, stay injury free, and accomplish your goals.